Anyone But You is the prime example of a movie that if you go in with the lowest of low expectations, you might come out on the other side surprised that the thing wasn't a raging pile of trash. And that's exactly what happened with me when I went and saw this film. Let's talk about it. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, even though the film has been out for a few weeks, maybe even a few months at this point. I don't know. Time has no actual meaning to me anymore. I, everything just kind of mixes together. But uh, if you've seen any rom-com in the last ever, you will know exactly how this film plays out. There is nothing surprising. Everything is predictable. The joke could easily be stated. That's been stated a bunch of times about other films that this was created by AI. And I can see all of that. And yet, because I went in so frosty, so chip-on-my-shoulder-esque, I did leave finding myself going, yeah, that was fine. That was perfectly acceptable for what it is. And what it is isn't much. Side note, I don't take things too serious over here. And if you're the same way when it comes to movies, you just like to hear someone chat about them, not get too worked up, or at least not in any sort of serious capacity. Yet appreciate film and be able to discuss it in a somewhat meaningful way please think about subscribing to the channel adam does movies right here i i am adam and i i do movies really hard like this video if you want push it around share it tell your friends and we can go off to the races with that out of the way anyone but you stars sydney sweeney and glenn powell these two people i think were built in a lab to be pretty much perfection. I can't see a flaw in either of them. They both have pearly white teeth, beautiful smiles, sculpted abs. And as a matter of fact, as this movie goes on for the hour and 45 minutes, Glenn Powell will continue to get more abs. He's like a Pokemon. He keeps evolving. It's ridiculous. I don't know what he's on, what sort of creatine shakes and blends and protein powders and steroids and whatnot. But it's unnatural and it's beautiful and I'm jealous, but let's continue. Sydney Sweeney, by the way, they know exactly what they're doing with this character. She's going to be in push-up bras or in two-piece swimsuits and just kind of overall being hot throughout the film. And the same can be said for Glenn Powell. He's shirtless more than he's shirt on. And so the ladies have something to look at, the guys, and you can choose which one they're looking at. Maybe both, maybe neither, maybe some of the other beautifuls in the film, because this is one of those movies that's full of attractive people only. It takes place at rich places no one can really afford or has ever seen or probably will ever see. And there's a bunch of silly shenanigans taking place. So what we have here, top level, surface level plot, uh, two people that go on a wonderful date. It's magical, it's out of a storybook, it's out of something you'd see in a Disney film. And after some magic, after some sparks, there's a miscommunication and they separate. They are pissed at each other. They hate each other's guts. But through fate, through perfect happenstance, through coincidental nonsense, they end up in each other's arms once again, or at least in each other's eye line. And they're going to have to deal with the consequences of what they said before. Now, this film is heavily leaning on hearsay throughout the picture. Some of it's intentional, some of it's not. People are gonna be trying to set these two up. There's gonna be double crosses, triple crosses, uh, crisscrosses, applesauces, and these two are gonna be part of it. They're gonna actually go along and say, you know what, we do actually love each other. We're not miserable around you guys. And oh, it's a flip, it's a flip. And that's kind of what goes on in rom-coms. There's always a little twist to it, right? Because even though these are all exactly the same films, one of them might have Reese Witherspoon falling in love with a ghost. Or maybe the movie revolves around 10 ways to lose a guy. Or maybe there's 10 things I hate about you. Or maybe, I, I don't know why I'm going with the numbers now, but basically there's always one little thing that makes it kind of unique. And in the case of anyone but you, the thing that makes it unique is these two despise each other, but they're forced together at a wedding between their two best friends. And so the families are coming together and these two are making everything and everyone miserable. So the family decides, okay, let's try to actually hook them up so they can get that bang on. They need to bang it out because they left things unresolved and one more hit it and quit it's going to get the job done. So they try to hook them up 
and these two figure it out right away, and so they're gonna throw an Uno reverse card and say, oh, we do love each other, isn't this special? We're, we're playing them, they're not playing us, and that's, that's the thing. That's the gimmick going on in this movie. And I will say it works well enough. If you hate rom-coms, this is gonna do absolutely nothing for you. I don't hate rom-coms, I tolerate them. They have their place, kind of like Hallmark Christmas movies for certain demographics that don't include me. I don't care for those, I think they suck and they're garbage, but I'm not gonna knock someone who likes them. And so, if you're not interested in the genre, you are not gonna be wowed by this in the slightest. I went in, again, very, very anti this film. It looked terrible. I don't have any thoughts on Sydney Sweeney outside of She's Hot and she can cry on cue. And so that's impressive to me. Acting wise, I never thought anything of her. Same with Glenn Powell. And they had enough chemistry and they were able to get through their lines well enough where I wasn't disappointed and I wasn't disgusted by them. I thought, you know what? They look great. They're getting the job done. There is some silly scenes that take place here and there. The jokes land for the most part. Um, it does definitely go into the cringe territory, uh, for me at least, where, okay, so you, you watch a TikTok or a YouTube short and it's some person saying a terrible joke, a really bad, unfunny joke, or just a really lazy, lame joke, and then you look over and you see it has hundreds of thousands of comments and people are all laughing, and you're shaking your head going, what? This is so lame. This is so stupid. But then you realize... A lot of people like really lame, really stupid humor, really easy, basic humor. And so that's what you get with this movie. Really lazy, easy, basic humor. And I guess that's really all there is to it. There's nothing deep, profound, creative, incredible, different. It's just incredibly paint by numbers, stock, love, rom-com, bullshit, and that's it. That's all I have to say. I thought it stuck the landing. I don't think it missed anything major. This isn't a movie I would recommend unless you're looking for an, a date night. This isn't a movie I would say rush out and see by any stretch of the imagination. But if you're bored and you like these two actors and you're probably under 20, this is a movie you'll get into. If you're like me and you don't give a shit about rom-coms but don't really care, throw it on on streaming services at some point and you'll be like, oh, that, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. I can watch this while I'm, I'm playing something on my phone or maybe I can actually keep my attention on the movie. And there's enough swimsuit scenes where you probably will. All right, those are my thoughts. Again, this is such a harmless kind of worthless film. <laughs> it's hard to be too upset with it. Uh, let me know if you saw it. I don't think anybody cares about this anymore. This is the definition of a movie that comes out and it's forgotten the next day. It'll probably make a, if, I think it did make a good amount of uh, revenue for what it costs and because it's an R-rated comedy, it had a lot going against it and I think it did really well. But I still think that afterwards, no one's gonna talk about this film ever again. Let me know though, comment below, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't, I post tons of movie reviews every single week, commentary, rants, live streams. I'm having a good time, I think you will too if you join. And if you wanna join and actually support the channel as I'm a one man operation, feel free to join on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or right here via YouTube, there's a, there's a join button and there's a $1 tier a $10 tier, and it's just a way of saying, hey, Adam, love your passion, love your energy, let's go. And go we shall. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take it easy.